Hello dear pupils, welcome to the house of knowledge. My name is Gusein Nizvidovic and I am very glad to see you all on our webinar. As you have sent some questions on the topics of the video lessons, we included answers to the questions in our webinar. And the topics of our webinar is helpline and revision of the grammar. The first thing, the first thing we are going to talk is helpline. So what is helpline? Cambridge Dictionary gives the following definition of helpline. Helpline is a telephone service provided by an organization or company to offer help and advice to help to people. Call ring phone a helpline. Call the inland revenue helpline with your queries. Set up, run, operate a helpline. A telephone helpline set up by the administrators was swamped by 9,000 calls in three days. A helpline for somebody. The counseling service runs a helpline for people with debt problems. Helpline number, a 24-hour helpline, a consumer, customer, legal helpline, a free emergency helpline. And what is the difference between helpline and help? Helpline is third term of help. As nouns, the difference between helpline and help is that helpline is a telephone or by extension email, web or SMS service which offers help to those that call, either, either as in a public emergency service or customer service while help is uncountable action gives given to provide assistance aid as a verb help is to provide assistance to someone or something so why call a helpline we all have stresses and challenges in our lives that we find hard to cope with sometimes we are able to share these challenges with friends and family sometimes we don't want to share them due to our fears of being judged or because we are worried that people around us will begin to look at us differently and define us by our problems. In some cases we do not want to share extremely sensitive personal information with people who are closest to us. Sometimes we may wish to share with someone but not be able to get in touch with them when we are in extreme, in extreme distress. Or sometimes we have no idea what to do uh, what to do and what to speak to someone and use them as a silent listener. Just speaking about possible courses of action offers us clarity. You could choose to call a helpline in any of these situations in many parts of the country. It is easier to call a helpline than it is to avail of mental health service. When you call a helpline you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Most helplines offer free services. You only pay a nominal amount for making the telephone call. And some are staffed by a trained concealer who can offer psychological support. Your information will be kept conf confidential. You have the freedom to speak about anything that is causing an emotional crisis without the fear of being judged and with the assurance of confidentiality. The helpline concealer the helpline concealer may also assess your needs and point you to the closest on ground resources. Is a helpline only for crisis situations? A helpline is not only for moments of crisis, nor is it only for people whose issues are life threatening. You can call a helpline to seek information about any of your issues or how to handle them. You can also Call to, th to seek information on behalf of another person if you think they have a mental health issues. Will my information be shared? Well, we said before that the information is confidential, but helplines are usually confidential in nature. Most helplines do not share the caller's name, contact number, or any other identifying, identifying details, unless the caller possesses a threat to their own life or that of others around them. If you are calling a helpline and would like some 
uh, reassurance about your data being kept anonymous, you could check with them at the beginning of your call and clarify what their policy is. Most helplines clearly state their policies on their websites as well, so you may wish to read about, about them before you make the call. What can I expect when I call a helpline? When you call a helpline, you can expect to speak to a counselor or volunteer who has some amount of training and counseling skills, that the counselor is non-judgmental, empathic listener, to get clarity on your problem by speaking to the counselor, a space to speak about any issues without being judged, information on how to seek further help for your issues, a reference to an expert who can help, other practical support you may need, for instance, information on child help services in cases of child abuse. What is the number of children helpline in Russia? Well, information about this was in our video lesson, but let me remind you, uh, it um, the number is eight eight double zero two double zero zero one double two uh, it is available the helpline is available uh, 24 hours and their website is www.childhelpline.ru if you need help with a psychologist you need a kind word advice and support you are sad and lonely i won't talk about call the number of helpline calls this number in any locality of the Russian Federation from fixed or mobile phones children in difficult situations at dollar cents and their parents may receive emergency psychological assistance provided by experts providing services for telephone counseling. This means that every child and parent can anonymously and free of charge to receive psychological help. Well, as for the topic of helpline, I think everything is clear. We can get to the second part, revision of the grammar. Uh, to be exact, we are to talk about conditional sentences. So far, you have only learned the basic rules for conditional sentence. It depends on the context, however, which tends to use. So sometimes it's possible, for example, that in an if clause, type one another tense, then simple present is used. Example, present progressive or present perfect. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, table conditional sentence type one so a future action simple pre in if class we use simple present if the book is interesting main class future i will buy it imperative buy it or model auxiliary you can buy it action going on now so we can use present progressive if he is snoring he is snoring i will wake him up imperative wake him up model auxiliary you can wake him up finished action present perfect if he has moved into his new flat future we will visit him imperative visit him model auxiliary we can visit him improbable action should plus infinitive if he should win this race future i will congratulate her Imperative, congratulate her, model auxiliary, we can congratulate her. And present fact, simple present. If he gets what he wants, sim we use a simple present, just he is very nice. Next, conditional sentence type 2, or second type of conditional sentence. Uh, condition refers to present future event. Uh, in if class, we use simple past. If I had a lot of money, in main clause we use conditional one. I would travel around the world. The consequences in uh, the past, simple past. If I knew him, we use conditional uh, second type. I would have said hello. Conditional sentence type three. It's impossible, yeah, as we know from the lesson. So conditional refers to present. Uh, we can use past perfect if uh, we use past perfect if I had known it then we use in main clause conditional one I would not be here now uh, pay attention to the word now 
and conditional refers to past, past perfect. If he had learned for the test, we use conditional to, uh, he would not have failed it. Well, my friends, our webinar is over for today. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you for your attention. See you next time. Goodbye.